Seven people, including two policemen and five militants, were killed and four law enforcement officers were injured as a result of an attack by militants on road patrol officers in the Karakachurkessia Republic of Russia, Ministry of Internal Affairs of Russia stated. Two police officers seconded from the Interior Ministry's branch in the Korgon region were killed. Two officers from the Interior Ministry's Traffic Police Department in the Karakachurkessian region a member of the Regional National Guard unit and a police officer from the Korgon region suffered wounds. Five attackers were killed on the spot, the statement reads according to the ministry, the perpetrators drove up to a temporary traffic police post, threw an explosive device towards police officers and opened fire from automatic weapons. Police officers responded with fire, meanwhile, an explosive device that one of the attackers was carrying detonated. Several improvised explosive devices were found at the scene. An investigation has been launched into the attack, the regional branch of Russia's investigative committee said. According to investigators, the attackers may have been involved in an assault on a police squad in the city of Karachevsk on April 22. Authorities in Russia's North Caucasus region of Karachaycherkessia on April 23 identified five men suspected of opening fire on a police patrol a day earlier, killing two officers and wounding another. Ruslan Simayanov, Vladimir Avryanov, Kazbek Zazayev, Ahmed Elkanov, and Ruslan Elkanov were added to the wanted list, the Regional Investigative Committee said. The committee said earlier that it launched an investigation into a deadly attack against law enforcement officers and illegal firearms possession. The assailants managed to take a pistol, an AK-47, and ammunition from the officers during the attack. State-of-the-art Russian radar 48YA6K1 podlet has been struck by the Guzi 9 group under the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense jointly with the soldiers of the 15th Ober Black Forest. The radar was used to identify and transmit the coordinates of targets to the Russian S-300 and S-400 air defense systems. Worth $5 million, 48YA6K1 podlet is a universal mobile solid-state 3 coordinate radar with all-round phased array and detection of air targets. The Podlet, also known as the 48YA6K1, is a modern mobile radar system designed to detect air targets at low and extremely low altitudes. The 48YA6K1 Podlet K1 system includes an antenna post, a control station, and a mobile electric generator. The number of simultaneously detected targets of missiles is 200. Its range is 10 to 200 km 10 to 300 km, while the maximum detection altitude amounts to 10 km. ISW assessed Ukraine's possibilities to liberate its entire territory from Russia. Ukraine's ability to liberate its entire territory in the long term depends on numerous future decisions in the West, the Kremlin and Kyiv. Any discussions that view the prospects of Ukrainian victory or defeat as predetermined outcomes ignore how all involved parties could dynamically change the war course in Ukraine. The Institute for the Study of War, ISW, reported this. Western media continue to report that some U.S. officials began discussions on freezing the lines again as the new military aid package to Ukraine may be insufficient for Ukraine to regain all of its territory. The ISW noted that the current package supporters did not claim that it alone would allow Ukraine to liberate all the Russian-occupied territory and discussions of possible end states of the war are premature as President Joe Biden signed the bill for new aid just two days ago. The US military aid is currently on its way to Ukraine and it will take several weeks to reach units in the combat zone and significantly impact the battlefield. In the coming weeks, Ukrainian forces will initially have to use US aid to stabilize the front line and stop Russian advances, particularly on the Avdiivka and Chasivya fronts. The scale and intensity of the projected Russian offensive operation in the summer of 2024 
which is likely to begin in June, is also still being determined. In addition, the Russian military command may actively assess and revise plans for their summer offensive efforts to account for engagements with better equipped Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainians must defend against Russian summer offensive actions and prevent Russian troops from making significant progress during the summer months before they can challenge the initiative and conduct a counteroffensive later in 2024 or 2025. Ukrainian forces must also address the present issues with training new personnel, equipping the new units and restoring the old ones. The exact timeline of these efforts, which is likely to play a significant role in determining Ukraine's future counter-offensive operations, is still unclear. ISW assessed that sufficient and consistent Western support will be crucial for Ukraine's future counter-offensive actions. However, the US and the West will have to react as Ukrainian military command determines the scale and direction of such operations and communicates Ukraine's needs to Western partners in the weeks and months leading up to future counteroffensive operations.